Ever since I was a little kid, I've always dreamed of having the ultimate setup. It wasn't just about having cool gear, it was about building something that was uniquely mine. Together with my brother, we've designed and built keyboards, macro pads, even this coffee cup tray. But we've never touched audio, at least until now. So first I'd like to address why somebody would even need a dedicated amplifier for headphones. Wouldn't an audio jack on my laptop be enough? Well, for a lot of users, that may be true. However, if you have already spent money on a nice pair of headphones, the integrated amplifier in your laptop might not be enough to actually drive them fully, especially if they're of higher impedance. Not to mention that the integrated amplifier in your laptop, as well as its power supplies, can be quite noisy. We're not just going to show you a complete project, we're going to take you on a journey from the design to the whole build process. The overall design was heavily inspired by Dieter Rams, the German designer who practically shaped the minimalist design language, and inspired brands like Apple and IKEA. We tried to implement his ideas of functional design with no gimmicks, only having some little details to accent the look, such as this volume knob, which was inspired by knobs on sports cars, and the orange PCBs. Additionally, we used these really nice sockets by Switchcraft, and two warm white LEDs. Okay, so there are a couple of ways that we can tackle the problem of making an amplifier. Uh, one option would be to uh, use a fully integrated solution, so an IC that has everything contained in it. Uh, another solution would be to go discrete, basically using components like transistors to build our own amp. We picked a specific topology where we're going to use an operational amplifier and then a, an additional push-pull output with two uh, complementary pair transistors. Uh, these two transistors on the output are essentially for additional current gain uh, for the amplifier itself. So after we're happy with our design and we've sent the PCBs for manufacturing and we received them, it's time to assemble. The schematic designs for all of our projects you will be able to download for free on our GitHub page in the description below. This brings us to our sponsor, JLC PCB. From fast prototyping to series production, they offer complete services from manufacturing to assembly for all of your projects. I have been their customer for years and I'm proud to be able to offer an affiliate link with a $70 discount for new users in the description below. Firstly, you'll need to upload your Gerber files and then after a bit, your PCB will appear in the 3D view. And then finally, you can choose some of the many options that they offer. I'm going to pick Black Solder Mask, Enig, and I'm going to remove their mark. And lastly, you'll need to save to cart and proceed to checkout. So for the enclosure, we bought these already made and anodized aluminum enclosures, where the PCB just slides in. Uh, you have to make sure that your PCB uh, is of compatible dimensions. And then afterwards we had to mill holes for our connectors. I really like these already made PCB enclosures. They only cost a couple of dollars, roughly around five, uh, and they're made out of aluminium, so they're perfect for these types of projects. We got ours at GLC's website. You will have to make holes for your assembly and since we already have a CNC machine, we decided to use it for this project for maximum accuracy. So we had to make holes for both the front and the back panel and we made enough for a couple of amplifiers, two of which are going away as gifts to friends. And after carefully removing it, we clean it up without scratching it, and then we place it carefully next to the others.
After we're done machining, it's time to laser engrave our logo and the product name. While the goal was to make a budget-friendly and affordable amplifier, some components did end up costing quite a lot. Like this main socket with a switch and integrated AMI filter was roughly 30 euros, and the 6.3 millimeter audio socket from a company called Switchcraft that we use on the front panel was roughly 20 euros. So here you can see us assembling the first prototype of the amplifier. There are a total of three PCBs in the project. One is the amplifier, one is the power supply, and the third is a very small PCB with the potentiometer. The pinout of the power supply, plus and minus, is done in such a way that regardless of how you flip it, uh, you will not make a mistake. The potentiometer is from a company called Alps, and it is roughly 10 euros after tax. It's a logarithmic, potentiometer with two channels and it's quite compact which we needed for this design so it could fit in the case. I do recommend the black enclosures over the silver ones. The imperfections from the production process are much less noticeable on the black ones. The oxide layer from the anodization usually has to be thicker for the black cases since the pigment has to go deeper into the material to achieve a deeper black. The result of this is also that black cases are more resistant to scratches. This is a much cheaper option than CNC machining your case, where you could spend hundreds of dollars for a case. And the build budget for this amplifier is below 200 euros. I've had several people try out this amplifier and they were really really pleased with the results. In the beginning, I was very skeptical whether I would be able to hear an improvement by using an audio amplifier. I thought that my hearing isn't as good as when I was a kid and I probably wouldn't notice any major differences. However, I was quite surprised as well. I assumed that the sheer power that this amplifier can deliver really does make a difference on high impedance headphones. I do plan on making a full dedicated video on the hardware design. I'm still making changes to the power supply mostly. I have already done some very early tests, such as a body plot for the gain, and it is very flat after 25 Hz. The same goes for group delay. It's very consistent after roughly 25 Hz. The next step would be to make a digital to analog converter to pair up this headphone amplifier with. I also asked a friend who's a professional composer and musician, and who also does music production, and he was really, really pleased with the results. He even wants one for his setup. If you like this video, you can support us by subscribing. As absurd as it sounds, to imagine souls on different grounds. They see your answer to my dozen bodies, screams from owls.